Welcome back to In Need of a Refill, where God's Word and the coffee are never in short supply. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. If you have a comment or question or passage you want me to look at, leave in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Father Almighty, we thank you for another day. We thank you for providing for us, Father. Thank you for your son. Please help us be more like him each and every day, Father. Please bless our time of study. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I actually had a different lesson ready for today. And about uh, 6.30 last night, I said, you know what? I think we need to look at something else. And... Um, so about 6.30 last night, I started working on this one, you know, so um, yeah, like that, you know, but those are both fun and frustrating, all in the same breath, you know, but uh, how many of you, when you became a Christian, thought, you know, that Everything was going to be just right. You're going to be mature. It's going to be great. I wish, right? It's one of those situations where it's like the, the attacks seem to get faster, harder, you know, more relentless against us. It's like dealing with camp in many ways, he. You know, it's like you go in healthy, you go in charged up, and by the fourth day, you're dragging. And by that next weekend, you're still dragging, and you're probably a little bit sick. You know, I, I think it was the Arizona folks that gave us something, or the New Mexico folks, but either way. You know, you know faith is one of those things that people have been asking for for centuries they want we want our faith increased I mean this is the Apostles right here I mean Luke 17 5 they're asking for their faith to be increased who wouldn't want that I mean they're dealing with Jesus and they saw some really cool stuff really cool you know Jesus raising the dead, Jesus healing the sick, casting out the demons, walking on the water, which, by the way, should have been what we were dealing with next, this week. It's next week. So, you know, uh, things like that. I mean, they have seen some really cool stuff, things that you and I would look at and say, I really wish I could have seen that. That would have been real, really neat. And yet... That's what they're praying for. I mean, they go to Jesus and ask him, increase their faith. Wait, what? I mean, you've seen all this stuff increase our faith? You know, it seems a little odd to me. I mean, if you look at Luke 17, this request, I almost said question, uh, request actually uh, look at the end of 16 comes at the end of the rich man and Lazarus, comes at the end of, you know, woe to you who put stumbling blocks in front of people, comes at the end of repentance and forgiveness. Increase our faith? That seems a little odd there, right? But, you know, here's what Jesus says to this. This is verse 6. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Did you notice Jesus doesn't actually answer the request? I mean, it's like, uh, well, I mean, if, he, if we were sitting... In a classroom, it'd be like, wait a minute, did you not just hear what I said? You know, but what he does is, well, instead, he goes into what we'll read next 
a description of a way to gain an increase in faith. But notice he's, he says, you know, faith, it depends on you. If you had faith, then it depends on us in a certain point anyway. But, you know, I mean, more faith is a good thing, right? That's what we want. That's why we're here. That's why we open our Bibles. Well, that's why we pop it, you know, on the phone so we can listen to it. Whatever the case is, that's what we want. Otherwise, we wouldn't be serving God, right? If we didn't want to be more like Jesus, we wouldn't waste our time. But instead, you know, we look at it and say, increase our faith almost like we have nothing to do with it. God, why am I not stronger in faith? You know, when I was a, a teen, I knew the answers. People wanted me on their, their Bible teams, their Bible bowl things. I knew the answers. I'm sure you did too. It was one of those situations where I thought, okay, I've got the knowledge up here, but it was nowhere near the heart. The faith, I thought, was just simply knowledge. But, you know, I'd look around at other folks and I'm like, they've got something I don't have and I don't understand this. What's going on here? But the fact is, knowledge it helps to increase faith, but knowledge does not equal faith. You know, so Jesus says a small amount of faith and do some amazing things. It will cause us to do things for God that we did not think was possible. And it's because, or at least one reason, is because we know we're not doing it by ourselves. So here's where he goes from here. This is 7 through 10. Which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat. But will he not say to him, prepare something for me to eat and properly clothe yourself and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you may eat and drink. He does not thank the slave because he did the things which were commanded, does he? So you too, when you do all the things which are commanded, you say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. That seems like a strange answer in a, in a way. I mean, he doesn't simply answer the request. I mean, that would be so nice. Lord, increase our faith. Boom. That would be so nice. But with serving him, with working for him, with walking daily in our Christian faith, we learn to trust him. We learn that we need his help. We learn that we can take God's promises to the bank because he is faithful. You know, Jesus offers this example of a slave and master relationship. You know, it's... Uh, Something in many ways we don't really understand. Uh, the closest we can get is the employer-employee thing. And even that doesn't really cover it. You know, but it, it's, it would be something to the effect of, you know, the boss saying, do this, we do this. And, well, in this case, we're just doing our job. Should we expect a thank you? Absolutely not. Sometimes it's nice, but it wasn't necessarily the case. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was thanked at U.S. Bank for all the work that was being put forth. It wasn't many. You know, and at the same token, though, I was just doing my job like the slave serving the master. But that's one thing we need to remember is we've got a job to do. God has blessed us with forgiveness. God has blessed us with reconciliation. 
He has showered us with grace, mercy, compassion, and so much more. But he's given us a job to do. Part of that is internal. Part of that is external. And part of that is way external. You know, way being outside the doors. But, uh, you know, <laughs> internal being, let the Spirit work on us, grow, allow the Spirit to grow the fruits that He wants to grow within us instead of, you know, fighting the changes. But it also includes helping one another to do the same thing. And then it also includes evangelism. You know, so I mean, it's all of those things and probably some more, but it's one of those situations that we're just doing our job. We're doing what the master has said. We're doing because he loves us, because of what he has done for us. But we need to remember who we're serving and who's serving who, you know? It's, more, it's not one of those things that we can really make demands of God. God, you owe me. Uh, yeah, it doesn't fly. You know, that's even, that's kind of hard to say, actually. You know, but it's one of those situations that when we remember our place, when we remember that we are the created, not the creator, all of a sudden, we can let him work work in us, use us, mold us, use us in his service. Because it is about him, it's not about us. I mean, here's what James says. This is a, a passage that I, I know you're familiar with. You know, this is James 2, 14 and 17. What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works. Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and, and filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. There was a year, I want to say it was the E, it was the second year we were in, in Wuhan. It's December, it's eight degrees outside. Our space heater, that's the best I can uh, describe it. It's not really a, a good heater. I mean, it, you would get 10 degrees uh, extra in the room that it was in and forget about it in the other rooms. Okay, you guys were already home, so y'all got spared from this, you know, but the heater goes out. So we call the school. Oh, yeah, 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 we'll come fix it. Oh, wait, you're leaving in a couple of weeks, right? You'll be fine. We'll fix it before you get back. Two months later, we show back up. Guess what's not done? <laughs> You know, uh, guess why we didn't trust the school? Because faith in the school would have meant that the school actually did what they said they were going to do. School didn't do that. You know, uh, that's just one example. But here's the thing. We have faith in God because we know he is able to do what he says he's going to do and he does it. That and is huge. But, you know, faith leads to doing stuff. It leads to doing stuff. Now, we can say, I have faith in God. But if we are not seeking to grow, if we are not seeking to serve him, do we really? If we are not being molded into the image of Jesus. Do we really have faith? 
You know, Peter says in 2 Peter, he makes this huge list in the first chapter of add to, add to, add to, add to. If you don't, then you're blind. You're short-sighted, having forgotten what has been done for you. It requires change. Come as you are, yes. Don't stay as you were. That's, that's the thing, you know. Here's the thing. Our works do not save us. We know that. But they are a picture, at least, of the gratitude that we have for what has been done for us. Without Jesus, we're condemned to hell. Without Jesus, we have no hope. So when we realize that we need Jesus and we obey the gospel, it should prompt us to want to do what he wants us to do, both internally and externally. You know, growing to be like him and helping others to understand as well. But here's the thing. James goes further with that. Faith without deeds is taking a nap. No, wait. That's not what it said. Faith without deeds is pushing up sagebrush. See, if we were south, I'd say, you know, daisies. But there ain't no daisies here. You know, so it's, it's the, uh, you know, what can something that's dead do for us. Our faith, if it is dead, doesn't help us to grow, doesn't help us to trust God, doesn't lead us to serve Him, you know, and that really is a lack of gratitude for what's been done. We're blind, we're short-sighted, having forgotten what has been done for us. Now, I will tell you, I need to go see the eye doctor. If I take my glasses off, I can tell that people are there. I can't tell you who you are. You know, and I certainly wouldn't want to drive that way. Okay? I cannot imagine being blind when I can just put the glasses on and see. Faith is the same way. As we let the faith grow within us, as we let the faith mature in us, we see more clearly who Jesus is. We see more clearly what he wants. We serve him better. We serve one another better. Faith without deeds might as well be driving blind. Because, well, he says he can't save us. You know, so he says, you know, he gives this example. Someone saying, go in peace, be warmed and filled. <laughs> so, if you're hungry, and someone actually has food sitting in front of them, but tells you, you know, oh, hey, be warmed and filled. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. How does that make you feel? Do you actually appreciate that person? You know, no, not at all, right? I'm like, man, give me some of that. Come on. Unless it's salad, dude, at which point, you know, there is no filled with salad. Uh, <laughs> salad is not food, you know, but that, I'm just saying. You know, but... But Jesus puts it a different way. I mean, if you want to see this better, turn over to Matthew 25. But here's 41 to 46. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, 
and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me, then they themselves will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? If it stops there, we're doing pretty good. If it stops there, there might be a, oh, you know what? You're right. That's not where he stops. Then he will answer them. Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Before this passage, he deals with those that did the things that he tells them they did not do. And they are just simply like, when? When? When was this? They did it because of who they were. They did it because it was the right thing to do. It was the godly thing to do. Not realizing that they were serving Jesus. Not realizing that these other guys would have gladly done it for Jesus, but for their fellow man, oh, oh no, 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 I'm sorry, no. Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. That's something we never want to hear, never. servant's job is to do what their master says. To do what he wants. I mean, that's kind of in the job description, right? You know, it's one of those situations. The master calls the shots. Like the boss calls the shots for the employee. You know, well, more faith, though, should come with a warning. It comes with more work. Because as, well, you find out that you can trust someone to do a job, you give them more important jobs, more things to do, because, hey, you can trust them. <clears throat> more faith equals more work. It also equals, in some cases, uh, more blessing, because as we work for God, we get to know him better. And that is a great, great blessing. Obedience does not lead to gratitude. It doesn't. It's what we should do. But it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we're going to be showered with gratitude. See, this is where the employer-employee thing kind of falls apart. Because at this point, you know, the gratitude comes with paycheck. Okay, gratitude in serving God comes with a paycheck, but it's a long way off. You know, it's after he returns. Our faith and obedience does lead to a change in the way we see things. As we are serving God, as we are seeking to be what he wants us to be, we start seeing things his way or at least that's the way it should work because we're not aiming at bringing glory to ourselves if we were aiming to bring glory to ourselves we would not be uh, seeking his will we would just be seeking publicity and that's not the case you and I are not seeking publicity we are seeking to glorify God we are seeking to show him that we are grateful for what he has done for us. And as we've said, our obedience and our faith, it does lead to recognition, but not necessarily recognition right now.
it leads to recognition when Jesus returns. That's the recognition that we want. That's the recognition that lasts. A man's recognition is very temporary. God's recognition lasts an eternity in that case. That's what we want. Lord, increase our faith? Absolutely. It's time to get busy. Busy letting him mold and shape us. Busy seeking to serve him. Both in this body and outside. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. And remember, if you're ever in need of a refill on God's Word, all we have to do is take it off our shelves. Spend some time with him. We won't regret it. Have a blessed week.